Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Urs Wiegerhoff. I'm emergency medical technician and emergency room nurse here in Germany, located in the northwest of Germany, which means we don't do the thing with leather trousers and sauerkraut and that kind of bullshit. In the last video, I told you something about my most favorite trauma bandages. What I want to tell you today is something about tourniquets. A little bit on um, historical background, what it was in the old days and what it is actually nowadays. One example. I got some, some other uh, tourniquets. I want to explain them step by step, video by video. Are you with me? Let's go for it. Showtime, folks. Tourniquet. What the hell am I talking about? Well, it is actually everything about a device to stop a critical bleeding. In the very early days, the very first time it was documented in 600 before Christ from the great grandfather of modern surgery in Egypt, especially for preparing amputations and something like that. So when an arm or a leg was traumatic and dramatically damaged or broken, um, it was pretty common to amputate the upper or lower limb, depending on the, on the trauma and the location of the trauma. Therefore, to prevent that the victim is bleeding to death, they used kind of leather stripes or leather bands or something like that with a stick or something pretty equal to turn and to stop the bleeding. So that was practiced in uh, the Roman Empire as well, somewhere between 200 before and 500 after Christ, I think it was. wasn't exactly my, It wasn't exactly my time, but I put something pretty nice and pretty um, pretty informative in the video description. I think. That's a pretty good way. It was documented in the First World War. It was documented in the Second World War in Korea, in Vietnam, and in the first part of Desert Storm in 1991. But they didn't have those funny things here. This is a combat application tourniquet, seventh generation, in friendly orange, in civil orange which makes much more sense in the civil market than the black ones. And I would like to explain why. The black one for military and for um, law enforcement, that's, uh, that's what I really can understand. But those devices in black in a civil situation, in a civil scenario, for example, an emergency room, or something pretty equal, they are very, very fast overseen. That's not a joke. We did some trainings for emergency rooms and uh, we had it that the black tourniquet, it was overseen. It was overseen. It was documented and um, the time where the um, First responders put the tourniquet on, was written down here on the, on the white belt of the tourniquet. And, um, but that was covered by the, by the blanket, for example. And um, the nurse in the emergency room put the blanket 
to the side and put the finger down here and said, what is this for a funny thing? So more than 60% of uh, medical personnel here in Germany don't know what a tourniquet is. So and now we get situations, we don't have that mass shootouts like in America or in South America or where the hell ever. But what we do have is that we get more and more issues with knife attacks, for example. Knife attacks in, in trains, knife attacks in, uh, in buses, something like that, which can lead to uh, mass casualties. That is not as funny as it sounds. So those devices are really useful to have. And I have this one and a trauma bandage, in my case the wound stop care one, in my left cargo pocket of my cargo trouser every day. That's why it's called everyday carry. And I carry them every day. And it's not as funny as it sounds. Why am I doing this? Because I understood it. So, this one and a proper trauma bandage and your left cargo puppet and you are ready to rock and roll from my point of view. So in the old days, a tourniquet was pretty much like this one here. This is a triangular bandage. This one is made of cotton wool with a regular, with a regular triangular bandages out of your car kit. It's not possible to stop a critical bleeding. That will break. It's not as funny as it sounds. That's why I sing and dance about the old fashioned old school classic triangular bandage made of cotton wool. Now we want to have a look how it works. Does it work? Of course it worked. It worked in Egypt and the pyramids somewhere around 600 before Christ. It worked, it was documented in, on the battlefield in Besançon, in France, it was documented that it worked in World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and partially in the first part of Desert Storm, 1991. This one is actually a device which cost you around about a, a euro or maybe two or something. And this one can save your life. And now I want to show you how it works. So you put it next to the nut, a little bit to the side, and you start turning and turning and turn and twist. And yes, it has to be painful and it has to hurt your you have to hurt yourself because if you don't do it right in training, you don't do it right in a real scenario. Ah. Now we fix it with the risk of the triangular bandage that it doesn't open up itself. Oh, come on. Holy moly, moly mo. <clears throat> ah, sir. Holy crap. Pretty old fashioned, but it works. And it works fantastic. The thing is, and the thing that a lot of people are yelling, it's not possible to improvise a tourniquet. Of course it works, but we have to train it. You have to practice it. You just get better in what you're doing by doing frequently. And you have to have somebody who shows you how it works and how it works correctly. So, 
that was the old one. In the next episode, I want to show you how to use this one in a correct way. So guys, that was it with a little historical background about how to stop a critical bleeding in case of tourniquets and what it was, what it is and what it's going to be. So guys, see you then, see you there, take care. Showtime, folks.